Good morning, Miramar, and welcome to the show. I'm your host, Tamara G. Don't forget, you can check us out on all of our social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at City of Miramar. That's M-I-R-A-M-A-R. -A -A and with me right here in Miramar is author Chris Clues. He is the author of What 80s Pop Culture Teaches Us About Today's Workplace. Listen, I love this description. Um, he is a totally 80s child. He grew up there, has a closet full of 80s movie t-shirts and a house full of 80s movie artwork which might explain why he's still single, <laughs> deep in his 40s, oh, he yeah. says. And he lives by the quote from the poet laureate Ferris Bueller. Life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop to look around once in a while, you could miss it. Poet laureate. <laughs> yeah, got him on my shirt. There you go. Yeah. So welcome to the show, Thanks. Chris. Thanks for having me, Tamara. I appreciate I, it. I yeah. love this because it was what 80s pop culture teaches us all about today's workplace. What made you come up with this? Yeah, so I was... Um, in a job that it was a little stagnant. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people had been there. Oh yeah. And uh, I was home having a self pity party of one on a Saturday afternoon, watching the Breakfast Club for oh, the hundred time, time right? yeah. <laughs> Just like everybody. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bender, at one point, Bender says, "Screws fall out all the time. The world's an imperfect place." And I thought, "I'm in an imperfect place." Mm -hmm. And then I thought, "Well, the business world's an imperfect place." So from there, I decided to write an article on LinkedIn about what the Breakfast Club taught us about the workplace. And I woke up the next day and all of these people had commented and liked it from all over the place. And I thought, wow, I didn't expect this at all. <laughs> so I wrote one on Ferris Bueller and work-life balance mm -hmm. and got an equally good response and thought maybe I had something. So I decided to take 10 of the movies that I knew really well from the 80s mm -hmm. and put them into a book and figure out, you know, what are the lessons, the business lessons for today that we can learn from these great iconic movies. And having a background in marketing also helped to come I up with so. this idea. I think right? so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 20 years of marketing I think probably helped, right. yeah, definitely. And, and so now you go around and you actually talk to uh, businesses, talk to people who are at conferences mm -hmm. about this. Yep. What has been the reaction from most folks when you say, I'm gonna talk about The Breakfast Club, I'm gonna talk about Ferris Bueller's Day Off? Um, I think curious and then exciting, <laughs> uh -huh. excited, because uh, you know the feedback I've gotten has been, this is really cool, you're taking these, these lessons like inclusion, for example, mm -hmm. social responsibility, things in the workplace that they hear about on a consistent basis, but packaging it in a very different way. Okay. So a way that's relatable and a way that hopefully you can take it back. If you're at a conference, you can take it back to your business or to your place of work and institute those lessons. And then remember that a certain 80s character or 80s movie taught you about that particular lesson. So. Okay, well yeah. speaking of that, I believe chapter three yeah. is uh, Dobbler, Lloyd Dobbler. Yeah. Say anything. <laughs> and say anything. Yeah. What other than the fact that, you know, Lloyd was not exactly the most motivated person in the world. Yeah, so. he wanted to be a kickboxing star. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sport yes. of the future. Yes. <laughs> he was right. The UFC is a sport of the future. So there you go. Yeah. You're right. He You're right. absolutely yeah. right. Okay. Yeah. But, you know, really. And then he went after the smartest girl in the class. I, I mean, in court. Yep. obviously he had some high ambitions. He did. And he talks about the idea of wanting to, to be in a dare great situation. You know, a dare to be great situation. Mm -hmm. He talks about that. And I talk about that as a lesson from Say Anything about how there's opportunities for us to dare to be great. You know, whether it's starting your own business, whether it's uh, creating a project inside of the existing business, striving to be a leader in your department, all of these opportunities are there for us. That kind of dare to be great situation that Lloyd took. And uh, Lloyd Dobler yeah, Lloyd taught Dobler. us that. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and he also taught us about how uh, there's a moment in the movie where Diane is going to. Uh, be a Rhodes Scholar, I believe it's a Rhodes Scholar, in the UK. And of course, he's not. So Because <laughs> he was a below average yeah. student, not even <laughs> average, but go ahead. Yeah, right. And, but he was cool. He was cool. <laughs> so um, she, she is giving, basically saying goodbye, mm -hmm. and she gives him a pen. And she says, write me. me. Yep. Now remember, this is 1988, and uh, we don't have email. We don't have internet. So you do have to actually write somebody. She gives him this pen, and she says, write me. And I took that as she really did want him to keep in touch, although he said, I gave her my heart and she gave me a pen, pen. right? Oh, oh, one of the classic yeah. lines. I gave her my heart and she yeah. gave me a pen. Now, in business, a lot of times, sometimes all the business can do is give you that proverbial pen. So maybe they can't give you a raise or a bonus at the mm -hmm. time, but they let everybody know through an email, hey, this person is doing great things in our business and we want to let everybody know that this is a person who is poised to be a leader. 
um, sometimes they can actually give you the bonus or raise and they choose not to. And that's when they've given you that proverbial pen. You've got to make a decision. <laughs> whether you're you know, going to stay or not. Whether you're going to stay or not. Okay. So there's a lesson there as well. Chapter yeah. four, mm -hmm. Clark Griswold. Yes. Probably one of the funniest movies yeah. was Vacation. Yep. Ever. Yeah. What could Clark teach us other than being the dumbest person on the earth? So Clark is, very, is goofy, right? <laughs> yes. But he has a big heart. Mm -hmm. He cares about his family. Everything he does is about his family. He just doesn't go about it the right way. Correct. Uh, Christmas Vacation in, in Chapter 4. Which uh, is one of my favorites. It's classic, mm -hmm. right? I mean, Elf and Christmas Vacation, every <laughs> Christmas, right? So Christmas Vacation, he teaches us a really valuable lesson, particularly for marketers, about knowing your audience. Okay. So there's a scene where, we can't repeat it word for word, obviously, but there's a scene where he's upset because uh, his bonus is actually <laughs> It's the Jelly of the Month Club. Jelly of the Month Club, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yes. The yep. the face that he gave when it was in jail, and he was thinking it was enough money to, to I think they wanted to put a pool in, And right? he had already paid up front <laughs> right. for, to put the pool in, right. and he gets this Jelly of the Month Club. <laughs> and his whole family's there waiting for him, the extended family, like to open up the bonus, right. and he just kind of sits there and he sighs, and he says it's a Jelly of the Month Club. And of course, Cousin Eddie, being Cousin Eddie, says, that's the, that's the gift that keeps on giving, Clark, all the year through. And... Uh, and Clark says, yes, yes, it does, Eddie. <laughs> and then he goes on this rant right. about, I want my boss woken from his slumber with all the other rich people on Melody Lane. I want him brought right here with a big red bow on him so we can basically tell him what we think about him. Mm -hmm. And of course, that's when he decides that he's going to kidnap his boss and bring him there. Cousin Eddie <laughs> takes him literally because that's who Cousin Eddie is. You know, his he's ride dead, or die. His ride or die. And he takes things literally, doesn't process mm -hmm. him, and goes directly to Melody Lane, brings his boss back with a red bow. Mm -hmm. And of course, this creates all kinds of problems. And the lesson in there is about knowing your audience, particularly with marketing people and salespeople. When you're speaking to a big group, you're speaking to a big group of awesome, diverse people who are going to interpret your message differently. And it's important to know that audience and understand that you're gonna get some surprises when you throw your message out there, particularly if you're throwing it out to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. People are gonna interpret it in different ways. Take that feedback and then hone that message later on because you're, all, you're, never, gonna, you're never going to have the perfect message, right? right? And so that's the idea about knowing your audience. Wow, I yeah. tell you what, when we come back, here is the book, What 80s Pop Culture, of course, teaches us about today's workplace. We're gonna be coming back and talking more with Chris Clues. I am laughing my butt off just remembering the Jelly of the Month Club. So we'll be back right after this. The gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the show. I'm here with author Chris Clues. He is the author of What 80s Pop Culture Teaches Us About Today's Workplace. I'm your host, Tamara G. And we have been laughing because I, truly, when you thought about which movies yep. to pick, how did you pick just 10? Because there were so many iconic movies from the 80s. Yeah, so um, that's a great question. And actually, I'm hoping to turn this into kind of a chicken soup for the soul via 80s movies. Okay. So I actually have a second book with a publisher now. I self-published the first oh. one. Okay. I have a second book with a publisher with 10 more movies from the 80s. Congratulations. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That'll be coming out in the fall. Okay. And I, can, and I, I plan to write a lot of them. Okay. Because you're right, there are a ton of movies. I, these first 10 were movies that I just knew really, really well that had mm -hmm. an impact on me um, as a kid. Okay. So movies like The Goonies, for example. Um, the Goonies. Right? It's, a, it's, a, it's a classic. <laughs> that is a group of misfits, okay. Yep. And what is the lesson there that so can be taught? The Goonies has a really valuable lesson. It's super important for today. Um, for those of you that haven't seen it, group of kids in high school, kind of outcasts, <laughs> their community is going to be developed by a developer mm -hmm. and their houses are going to be torn down and they want to save their town. They find a treasure map that supposedly leads to a treasure mm -hmm. that One-Eyed Willie, a pirate, back in the day had left and they go on this quest to find the treasure. So Chunk is one of the kids. Oh yeah. Yep, Chunk, right? So Chunk. you already know he's a yeah. little yeah. on the heavy side. Rotondi does the mm -hmm. truffle shuffle, which I'm not going to do here. <laughs> okay. But if you go see the movie or if you watch the movie, you'll know the truffle shuffle. So he actually runs, he's kidnapped by a uh, family of bandits and he's thrown in the basement. And he's in the basement with a guy named Sloth. Mm -hmm. And Sloth is chained up in the basement. He's been thrown down there by his family for no other reason but the way he looks. He's got this cone-shaped head, these ears that wiggle, his eyes are misshapen. And as Chunk says when he gets closer to him, he says, man, you smell like fizz ed. <laughs> right, so he's, he's got a lot of things working against him. Right. But for no other reason than the way he looks, he's chained in the basement. 
Well, Chunk looks past all of these things, and he brings Sloth into the group. Okay. Right? And what does Sloth do in return? Sloth shows his biggest character trait, which is his heart and his loyalty, by saving, spoiler alert, by saving the Goonies at the end. Uh, the movie came right? out in 19, what, 88? 80, 80, 85. Five, okay. Yeah, <laughs> uh, spoiler alert for those of you who haven't seen it, though. Uh -huh. He saves the Goonies at the end. Now, they could, if without him, they would have either perished or not gotten the treasure. Right. They right. got they got the treasure and they and they were saved. Yeah, right. So there's a big lesson on inclusion in there in the in the workplace. Okay. You know, looking past these things that people tend to create clicks in the workplace, those were those should be left in high school, right? Got it. We're in the workplace now. We're all working together. Include everybody, regardless of their odd shaped head or the fact that they smell like fizz. <laughs> I know I have on some days. So, you know, gonna, <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Okay, this one right here, Axel Foley and Beverly Hills Cop. Yep. That movie, besides the fact that they're getting ready to remake it, and we'll talk about that in a little bit as well, um, what can that teach us about today's workplace? So Axel Foley, one of my favorite characters mm -hmm. in all the 80s. Dun, and by the way, classic, classic. Yes, the theme quick, song. quick story about Eddie Murphy, actually. Okay. So uh, 1988, turning 18, my mom got my best friend Dexter and I tickets to Eddie Murphy Raw Live. I saw Raw too. Okay. When he had on the the red, the red uh, leather uh, the, outfit, uh, purple, purple was okay. Raw. I saw. I think it was red. red. Was delirious. I, I got a mixed mix up. up. Right okay. okay. However, I don't think she knew exactly what she was sending us to <laughs> until we got home and started telling the jokes. But anyway, right. <laughs> so Eddie Murphy is still one of my favorite okay. actors of all mm -hmm. time. And Beverly Hills Cop, Axel Foley, teaches us about how to win with a lack of resources. If you remember when he sent when he goes to Beverly Hills to solve He's his driving an old Chevelle, right? Yeah. <laughs> and he immediately has his gun and badge taken from him. <laughs> Thrown out of a plate glass window and mm -hmm. has his gun and badge taken from him. So he has to rely on his ingenu ingenuity, his intuition, his innovation. He doesn't have any of the tangible tools that a police officer would have to solve a crime. Right. But he does it anyway. And we talk about that in the workplace. We've all said, I don't have enough resources, whether it's humans, time, budget, whatever it is, every one of us is guilty of saying that. Okay. But that's the time to like reach in and grab that inner axle fully. You're in a Detroit. Well, and I promise that I yeah. will not fall for the banana in the tailpipe. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> okay. As you shouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> the other movies, um, Back to the Future, E.T., Stand yeah. By Me, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, and The Breakfast Club. We want people, of course, to buy the book to find out how this can pertain to today's workplace, and you're going to enjoy the read. But truly, those 10, obviously, made such a huge impact yeah. on your life. Yes. Tell us about those. So I, we talk about why is it that 80s pop culture and mm -hmm. 80s movies keep kind of coming back. I mean, every decade has a little bit of a resurgence when it comes to pop culture, but I don't think that any decade has really um, supplanted itself in all of these different generations. Um, we were just talking earlier to somebody who's mm -hmm. 31 years old uh -huh. who said loves Breakfast Club, right? Yeah. I was in the grocery store 4th of July weekend with a buddy and a girlfriend, uh, his girlfriend, and uh, the girl who was bagging our groceries, I was wearing a Breakfast Club shirt. She said, that's my favorite movie, my friends, and I love it. I said, how old are you? She said, I'm 15. Wow. I was 15 when it came out in 1985. So why is it that these movies keep resonating? I think there's two reasons. One is they weren't as packaged and polished as all of our entertainment is today. Mm -hmm. It's almost like everything is built in a lab today, and it's tested and tested and tested before it goes out just to make sure that we're gonna make all of our money back and then some. In the 80s, you didn't have that option. They just it, threw it out there and if it stuck, great. If it didn't. That was it. Maybe yeah. they did a screen test. Right. But once it was out there, it was out there. And there were very few channels to make your money, so you better have a good product, uh, particularly with movies. And I think the second is second thing is the characters were real. When I talked to, for example, uh, there's a great documentary called Don't You Forget About Me mm -hmm. from about 10 years ago where these kids went Simple out. Simple Minds. Simple <laughs> Minds, right? From Breakfast Club. From Breakfast Club. <laughs> yep. And these kids went to do a documentary on finding John Hughes before he passed away. Oh, yeah. Um, they wanted to find him to let him know. They were in their late 20s to let him know that his movies were still having an impact. They went to a high school and they asked high school kids, do you know Ferris Bueller Breakfast Club? And they said, yeah, of course. And they asked them, how, why is it that you still like these movies? And they said, the characters are real. They're us. Wow. They had flaws. They were awkward. Mm -hmm. They were uncomfortable looking. They, they, he, they, he represented you know, all of those, that criminal, the brain, the basket case, the geek, and the outcast, right? Sixteen Candles, one of my favorite. Sixteen Candles. One of my favorite yeah. movies. Yeah. John Hughes, of course, directed that. Yep. And um, you know, we can even talk about you know, how many people are still looking for Jake Ryan. 
But that's another story. Yeah. <laughs> Who's doing very well in his own right, actually. Yes, Has he is. Has a furniture is. business. Has a furniture business yeah. in uh, Carolina, North Carolina, yeah, I, I believe. Yeah, Carolinas, yeah. Yeah, and he just got out of the business. But that's another story. Yeah. Um, okay, when we come back, yeah. we're going to talk about all of these remakes of the 80s and what Chris thinks about that. Because trust me, there is a market for it, I guess. Yeah. But do you really want to bother with perfection? So we'll be right back. Hi, and welcome back to the show. We're speaking today with author Chris Clues. He is the author of What 80s Pop Culture Teaches Us About Today's Workplace. And he has put in this book 10 iconic 80s movies. Uh, and we talked about them a little bit. Of course, Ferris Bueller's Day Off is in there. Uh, as a matter of fact, he thinks he's a poet laureate of <laughs> Ferris Bueller. The Goonies, Say Anything, uh, Vacation, Beverly Hills Cop, Back to the Future, E.T., Stand By Me, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, and The Breakfast Club. You actually are working on a second one yes. now that you have included. Okay, so so what movies are in that second book? So the second book has 10 more movies from the 80s. Mm -hmm. uh, movies like The Lost Boys, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. <sighs> These are all awesome, okay. The Outsiders. Okay. Uh, Caddyshack. Yeah. Um, I sit and watch Caddyshack every time it comes it's, on. It's I, I can't, And I just laugh. My butt off. And filmed down here. And filmed in <laughs> that, South That's Florida. right. And yeah. Davey, as a matter of that's fact. Right. Yeah. yeah. At Rolling Oaks. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, Coming to America. So, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, uh, Karate Kid. Okay. Yeah. And a couple others. So, um, and it's really cool. So, I, I actually got a publisher for the second book. Okay. So, it's going to go hopefully on pre-sale in sometime in September and then be available in market late October, early November for for purchase. Okay. Um, and it's really exciting to do these 10 new movies. And I actually, what I'm going to do moving forward, I learned from the second book, is I crowdsourced all but two. Okay. So on social media, I would go out and say, here are four movies. Which one do you want me to write the next chapter on? Okay. And that's and, uh, how they That's how I did they. it. Okay. I saved two chapters for myself. Okay, all good. Right. Well, we are looking forward to the second one. Again, that's going to be coming out very soon. Um, before we let you go, we have to talk about uh, the fact that 80s pop culture seems to always be around. Yeah. You know, it lives, the 80s live. Let me tell you, best decade ever, okay? That's right, no question. <laughs> exactly, no question. best yeah. decade yeah. ever. I don't care what the 70s and the 90s people say, best decade ever. Except parachute pants. <laughs> that, that, you that, owned. Right. I wore them, <laughs> I would never wear them now at 48, okay. but I wore them at 14. Yeah. Uh, excuse me, jerry curl, yeah. okay? <laughs> I was getting my soul glow The soul glow, on. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that comes from coming to America, if you guys don't know. One. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I wanted to talk to you yeah. about. Apparently, Hollywood tends to run out of ideas. <laughs> and yeah. they have gone back and reached into some, you know, time machine to try to redo these movies. Yeah. Um, Terminator is being redone uh, mm -hmm. over again. They are getting ready to do Coming to America, Top Gun. Yeah. Um, what else? Bill and Ted's. Bill and Ted's, excellent. Rambo. Adventure. Rambo is coming out again. Okay. Yeah. What? All we need now is Rocky to come out again, but um, oh, Creed, but they Creed. had Creed. Yeah. They got it with yeah. Creed. They did that right, by the way. Okay, yeah. okay. As our producer says, yes, they did <laughs> yeah. that one right. Yeah. Thanks, Andy. Yeah. Um, but what do you think about that? Is there a way to capture this? Because those were iconic films. I just, you just can't mess with them. Right. So the whole reboot thing. Um, is it true to call it a reboot? Well, not these now, okay? okay? Initially, they were rebooting them. Okay. And just, you know, to digress a little bit, I'm a huge Patrick Swayze fan. Roadhouse. Yeah, Roadhouse. Dirty Dancing. Yeah. Well, <laughs> okay, uh, you know, I doubt That's the one I haven't okay. seen. I, point I, Break. Point, point Break, Roadhouse. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, Ghost. Red Dawn. Oh, yeah. okay, I remember Red yeah. Dawn, okay. So Patrick Swayze, huge, not like my mom. Like, every time there's a Patrick Swayze movie on, my She's mom would text it. me and say, oh, my Patrick's on. So, okay. But I, I love Patrick Swayze, and they were redoing his movies, and they weren't working. And so now they're going to apparently redo Roadhouse, reboot Roadhouse, which I'm really upset about. <laughs> However, boycott. boycott, boycott, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> no Patrick Swayze, no Sam no. Elliott can't be Roadhouse. Exactly. So uh, they were rebooting these movies, and they weren't working. About a couple of years ago, Red uh, YouTube Red is the YouTube Premium channel. Okay. They did a, a Karate Kid series called Cobra Kai, which is going into its third season. Now what they did is they took the original cast. And they they were able to find later, them. It's a sequel. Okay. Right? Ralph Macchio, Johnny, all these guys, right? Okay. So they they fast forward thirty years. Where are they now? And what's the story that can be developed from where they are today? And it was a huge success. Right. And the movie houses started saying, wait a minute. Instead of creating using new actors and actresses for these iconic characters, how about we just go get the original cast 
and update it 30 years later, what's happening with the story. Okay. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. It's going to be the original cast with kids now. Wow. They have daughters, right? The daughters are going to be part of the story. Uh, Coming to America, original cast. And, and with Eddie Murphy, with Eddie Murphy uh, finding out he has a son, yeah. I believe. So yeah. he's going to be coming back to to uh, America. But oh my God. So Simi is back. Simi is back. Right? <laughs> oh my God. But please, yes. please let Randy Watson. Please they let have Randy, to do Randy Watson. <laughs> they have to do Randy Watson. Please. It can't be coming to America Randy, Randy Watson. Randy yeah. Watson. Yeah. Yes. And sexual chocolate. Yeah. Okay. And the barbershop. <laughs> and the barbershop. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And so, and even with Tom Cruise. Yeah. Um, now, a couple of the characters died in that movie. Goose. Um, yeah, Goose. Goose, yeah. Goose passed away. Yeah. But, you know, obviously they're going to pay some type of homage to him. Oh, I'm sure the, they will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, Val but, Kilmer. Right, but yeah. you think that obviously the way to do it is to do a sequel yes. versus actually reinventing. 100%. Okay. 100%. These characters are so iconic that mm -hmm. it's hard to see anybody else in those and now we've talked about how these movies are crossing generations right so you have kids in their teens and in their 20s especially because of stranger things they're going back and rediscovering these movies so to put a new face on these characters wouldn't make sense to them either i don't think right oh my gosh yeah. well listen hollywood if you're listening this is the way to do it I, and as a matter of fact it's funny i've already planned to go see uh coming to america i want to see top gun but if it they had put someone else in it i wouldn't no, absolutely not that's right Absolutely not. There is only one Prince Akeem. There's only one that's, Simi. That's it. <laughs> and there's only one yeah. Maverick from yeah. Top Gun. <laughs> yeah. And if you're listening, somebody do the Breakfast Club on Broadway, please. <laughs> All right. That's a Broadway show I'll go see. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. So thank you so much, Chris. Yeah. How can people get the book and how can they book you yeah. to come and speak to their organization, um, to their business? Uh, because, you know, they, you're right. These movies really did have a lot of lessons. And I think in our age group, we've kept them over the years. Yeah. So thanks. I appreciate that, Tamara. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so you can reach me on mm -hmm. social media. Mm -hmm. I'm at, I got lucky enough to get the Twitter handle at 80s Pop Culture. You did not. Stop it was available it. last summer, and I okay. grabbed it, of course. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that was a sign for me. Okay. Uh, LinkedIn, Chris Clues, Facebook, Chris Clues. And then I'm also on Instagram, Chris Clues 80s. Okay. 80s. Uh, I have a website, chrisclues.com, C-H-R-S, C-H-R-I-S-C-L-E-W-S.com. Okay. And that's where you can find more information about booking me. Um, I see clues one at gmail.com as well. So I'm doing a lot of speaking at conferences and events. I'm mm -hmm. ready to do yours. We have a lot of fun. I get, we'll break it up a little bit. I know conferences are, are great. You learn a lot. You absorb a lot of information. But if you bring me in, we'll have a mm -hmm. lot of fun. Um, very relatable. I'll give away some books on some pop very quizzes. Nice. Very nice. And, um, and we'll have a blast talking 80s movies and the lessons we can learn from the workplace. All right. Sounds good. What 80s pop culture teaches us about today's workplace. Chris Clues, thank you so much for coming in thank today. Thank you, Tamara. I, really I have laughed. It. I've had a good time. So thank you. It was awesome seeing you. Yeah, you too. Yeah. It's been, what, 14 years? 14 we years. Were saying, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. We met. We were actually on a, a Bachelor, Bachelorette <laughs> program. Yes. Yeah. And we were being make auctioned off. Make a wish. Yeah. So all for charity. So yeah. it's been a while, but so good to see you. Thanks, Tamara. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. All right. I have with me right here today three men who are going to tell you all about what's happening in the city of Miramar for their utilities. But first, don't forget, you can check us out on all of our social media. We're on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at City of Miramar. That's M-I-R-A-M-A-R. -A -A and as everyone knows, it is right here in Miramar. Let's introduce yourselves. What's your name? Yeah, my name is Ronnie Navarro. I'm the Assistant Director of Utilities. Mm -hmm. Uh, my name is Dr. Roy Virgin. I'm the director for utilities. My name is Jill Ha. Uh, I'm the assistant uh, director of utilities. All right, so we got a lot of smart men here, <laughs> a lot of engineers. You guys have a very special project that is going on. It's the Historic Miramar Infrastructure Improvements Project, better known as HMII3. Uh, so tell us all about it. Well, the Historic Miramar Infrastructure Project really is bounded by Pembroke Road to the north, Southwest 64th Avenue to the east, Southwest 25th Street, and Southwest 68th Avenue to the south, and the Florida Turnpike to the east. Mm -hmm. This project really encompasses approximately 200 acres of already completely built out and um, residential area, primarily residential area. Uh, within these residential areas, however, there are small pockets of commercial areas. Mm -hmm. And um, so in total, there are approximately um, 
890 residential homes, approximately 44 um, commercial properties, and approximately 37 um, business establishments. Okay. And I want to say, too, for Ronnie, when we're talking about historic, I mean, truly what Roy is saying, these homes were built when Miramar first started. And Miramar is what now, 63, 64 years old? Mm -hmm. Right. It was established in 1955. Mm -hmm. So actually, most of the current infrastructure in this neighborhood was constructed way back in the 1950s. Mm -hmm. So this historic Miramar Infrastructure Improvements Project is designed to improve the neighborhood by mitigating flooding, enhancing fire protection, reducing health and environmental risk associated with antiquated septic systems. So HMI3 aims to um, uh, upgrade and improve the existing water mains, install additional fire hydrants for fire protection, construct new storm drains to improve storm water conveyance, and constructing new uh, sanitary sewer pipelines and a new lift station that will allow the property owners to abandon their septic tank and connect to the city's sewerage systems. Wow, okay, so now as someone who grew up with the septic tank, I understand all about that. Mm -hmm. And so now the residents will have a chance to actually connect to the city's that's sewer right, system. That right. is awesome in mm -hmm. 2019, that's great. Mm -hmm. So now Jen, tell us about how this all came about. Obviously it needed to be done, mm -hmm. but how did all of this and the funding come about? Um, this funding is actually coming through a partnership with the Broward County. Okay. And this, this project is about a $4 million uh, uh, project. Wow. It's coming from a state uh, uh, resolving a funding program uh, plus the Broward County uh, fundings. So that's support this uh, project. Okay. Yeah. And Roy, I know you've been here as a director um, and, and been with the city for a long time. You've seen the fact that this needs to be done like immediately, right? Absolutely. And um, as a matter of fact, we had phase one and phase mm -hmm. two, and now we're on to phase three. And later on down the road, we'll have to move on to phase four. Mm -hmm. And there are different components to it. But the, but the, the results that we are seeing from phase one and phase two justify having phase three and subsequently having phase four of this project, of this kind of project. And so Ronnie, what would you tell the residents of Miramar? Because obviously when you're trying to uh, improve their situation, there's gonna be a little bit of inconvenience. That's right. Comes, you know, w whenever any development is, um, is implemented, mm -hmm. there will be some, a lot of inconveniences. Inconveniences due to uh, road deterioration because you've got to, this is like a major surgery. Okay. So we are installing pipelines up to 10 feet or even more deep. So roads are going to be closed off, right. roads are going to be, uh, you know, broken up, that type of thing. That's right. Okay. So before you see any improvements, we have to improve first what is underground. Mm -hmm. And people don't see that. And that's the uh, main issue when it comes to underground construction. Will water be turned off? It sometimes intermittently? It, it, will, it will be scheduled. Mm -hmm. and so uh, the people will know, they won't just wake up. Right, and, you and know, there the unless off. there is an accident. Okay, and we don't want that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we don't want that. And so now, Jen, mm -hmm. when is the completion of phase three? Do, do you guys have a projected yeah, ending for it? Uh, projected to finish January next year, okay. 2020. Okay. So. All right, sounds good. And Roy, you said there's going to be a phase four too. Yes, there'll be a phase four, and, and in, inside the phase four, there will be mostly drainage mm -hmm. um, because I think we'll take care of most of the sewer mm -hmm. and, and the water side, but there'll be <coughs> clearly more drainage um, being applied to the phase four and um, maybe subsequent areas to that to a phase five. But mm -hmm. certainly, phase one and phase two have greatly enhanced the quality of life for those residents, and we, we know that phase three will do the same. And we, we ask the residents and we know that there are some inconveniences, mm -hmm. but to bear with mm -hmm. us at the end of the day, they're gonna be really happy with the quality of service that they will get from this kind of improvement. Okay, and for more information, Ronnie, where can they go uh, if they just wanna know the schedule of things or just to know what is involved in this phase three? We have, a, we have hired a firm, mm -hmm. uh, it's called um, 
the name of the firm is Adams Consulting, mm -hmm. and they take care of all the public relations and public outreach for this project. Mm -hmm. But in addition to that, too, we also have our own hotline, which is 954-602-HELP. Mm -hmm. And although they are not directly tied to this project, but if they, if they can get to Adams Consulting, mm -hmm. I'm sure any information that is sent to them will be routed to that, that area. So there we have uh, multiple lines in which to communicate whatever issue there, there is. Okay, and of course you can always go to the website, which is miramarfl.gov. We certainly mm -hmm. thank you, Ronnie and Roy and Jen, for being here. Mm -hmm. And just know, Miramar residents, that it is going to get better. <laughs> Trust me, yeah. they're in phase three now, so they're almost finished with this infrastructure in historic Miramar, the historic Miramar infrastructure improvements. Phase three, it's going to be start. Is it is it going on right now? When is the official start date for it? No, it started already. Right? Okay. Yeah. And uh, it's yes, because I know I was riding down Pembroke Road. I know it has. Right. Okay. Yeah, we're approximately seventy five percent complete overall mm -hmm. completion. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So as we all know, it's right here in Miramar. And for any more questions that you may have, or if you want more information, miramarfl.gov/utilities. Mm -hmm. Thank you all so much for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.